Hi, I'm Jeff Lee with the Town of Gilbert Water Conservation Office. You've already looked at our first video which shows you how to read your water meter to see if you might have a leak. And our second video showed you how to check your pool to see if you have any leaks. And now what we're going to do is you're going to look at your irrigation system to see if you have any problems there. Well if you don't have a pool or you've already ruled that out in the step two video, check and make sure your irrigation timer isn't actually running a program which means water should be running through the meter. So what you're going to do is going to go to your irrigation timer and open it up and most of your timers will have a display on it that'll tell you if it's running a station. At this house we have a smart timer that doesn't have the display so what you're going to do is check the app and see if that's showing that it's running anything. And in this case it isn't, so if we're seeing consumption on the meter, we know it's not the irrigation controller actually running anything. So if you're still seeing water use on the meter, what you're going to want to do is find the water supply for your irrigation system. Even though the timer's not running anything, it could still be a problem in your irrigation valve. So what you want to do is shut off the water supply itself to the irrigation. So that's normally where the water comes into the house, and you'll have this backflow preventer just like we showed you in the pool video. So what this does is it makes sure the water, once it goes out into your drip and sprinkler systems, it can't come back into the drinking water. So these are what are protecting your water supply. So what we're going to do is we're going to shut off the water valve and you want to shut off the one on the horizontal pipe. With this type of valve, if the valve is parallel to the pipe, it's in the on position. So you're just going to turn it a quarter turn. If it's perpendicular to the pipe, it's in the off position. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at the meter and see if that made it stop showing water use. So when you check the meter after shutting off the water supply to the irrigation system if it stopped running, that means you have either a stuck on valve or a seeping valve. A seeping valve is one that closes but not completely. A stuck on valve is something that never shuts off, it's fully open. Now if it were a stuck on sprinkler valve that would be really, really obvious because your sprinklers would actually be running non-stop no matter what you did at the timer. Um, if it's a stuck on drip valve, because they apply the water so slowly, that can be really, really sneaky. So what you want to do is turn the water supply back onto the irrigation system and first come check your sprinklers to make sure they don't have a seeping valve issue where the water is just barely kind of oozing out of them. So in this case we can actually see the water is still coming out of the sprinkler head, the timer is not running it, so what that means is the valve itself is not completely closing down what we call a seeping irrigation valve. Another really good tip to spot a seeping irrigation valve on sprinklers is because there's a little bit of water here all the time and it's really, really shallow. So bees in the desert are very good about finding that water source where they're able to get a drink but not drown. That's why we don't want them in the pools. So if you see a lot of bees coming in and out going to a certain sprinkler head, then you probably have a seeping irrigation valve. If you do have a seeping valve, the valve is in the box itself. Normally they're a larger rectangular box with either a tan or a green lid on it. So you're going to find out which one of these two valves are actually running the sprinklers. So in most cases you can actually repair the valve from up top. You'll see the screws on top of the valves here. Once you turn the water supply off, you can just disassemble the valve, make sure it's flushed out and clean, there's no dirt or debris inside there. Or it could be that rubber diaphragm inside there has a tear or a hole in it that would cause your problem as well. So just replacing that, either take a picture of your valve and bring it with you to the irrigation supply store, or if you've already disassembled it, bring the diaphragm itself down there, they'll know exactly what you need. Sometimes you just get a damaged sprinkler head, sometimes it's done by mowing or you're weed eating when you're trimming around the edges. And as you can see, these are extremely easy to spot. Those are the big giant geysers, so once you turn them on, you know immediately you've got a problem. So in this case, it was actually just a damaged nozzle. So what we've done is we've already removed the old nozzle. So now we're just going to reach down inside the head and pull up that pop-up stem. And we're going to replace the nozzle. This type of nozzle actually comes with a screen attached. Your standard spray nozzles, it has a separate screen. Make sure you're using the screen. That's what's going to protect your nozzle from getting clogged up. So you're going to go ahead and just screw on your new nozzle, assuming the pop-up stem hasn't been damaged. If that's the case, you're going to replace the whole head. So now that we've got that on there, we're going to turn it back on and make sure the water's pointing in the right direction. The other thing is, is make sure you're using the right nozzle. 
There are all types of different nozzles that throw different patterns and different distances. And when we turn these back on, you're gonna see these are what we call the rotary nozzles. So they've got multiple rotating streams. If you've got these, make sure you have all of them on the zone, the same type of nozzle, not a mixture of the regular fixed pattern sprays and the rotating nozzles. They apply the water very, very differently, so it's real important you get the right nozzle back on for what your yard needs. Okay, you also want to make sure that you're checking out your drip irrigation system on a regular basis, especially if you're running them in the middle of the night. Now, drip irrigation puts down the water very, very slowly, so finding those leaks can be a little bit sneaky, so they get hidden, especially if you're running them in the middle of the night. By the time you get up, you're just not gonna see the problem. So you wanna turn these systems on in the daytime and do a more careful inspection. You're not gonna see those big geysers of water like we saw with that broken sprinkler head. So in this particular case, we have an emitter location that's actually lost the emitter. So now it's putting out this giant stream of water instead of the drip. So at that point, all you're going to do is put on your new emitter and now you'll see we've got a dripper again instead of a big stream. In this case, we actually have an emitter running where there's not a plant anymore. So it may have died. And if you're not gonna replace the plant, all we're gonna do is we're gonna put on what's called a goof plug. We're just going to go ahead and clip off that emitter. Your standard pruning shears work very, very well. And then we're gonna put on what's called a goof plug. And they come with multiple uh, goof plugs on these little trees. You just break one off, gonna insert that completely in. So now what's going on is now the water's not going to come out of here. If you do want to put another plant here in the future, all you have to do is cut off your goof plug, reinsert an emitter, and you're all ready to go.